oh my god, I think I've really maybe messed up here. Hey sailors, welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy, if you are new here, and if you are not, then you know that, and welcome back, and thank you for coming back. Oh, I don't really know where to start. Okay, this video, as you can see by the title, it is called I Have Failed You. This video is on the back of hearing about a few people who have got fired from their job on board cruise ships. Now, I've actually heard of a lot of people who've got fired recently. I don't know why January is the month, but apparently it is. But there are three firings in particular that made me want to make this video. So I've worked on cruise ships for nearly eight years. So I have a good feel of the industry. I've worked on a lot of different cruise lines. I know a lot of people who are in the industry. And because I have this YouTube channel and I'm here to help you crew members, future crew members, I obviously hear a lot of stuff from you guys as well. And there are three incidences that have happened recently where I've heard their side of the story, but I've also heard the cruise lines side of the story and their bosses side of the story. And then I've been able to kind of put two and two together and come to a bit of a shitty conclusion, which made me think about the information that I share on this channel. And I was like, oh my God, I think I've really maybe messed up here. Maybe I haven't been painting a realistic picture of what it is to work on a cruise ship, even though that was completely, that is the aim of this channel. Like I want you to go on board and you're like, I know what is coming. I know what to expect, the good, the bad, the amazing and the downright ugly. Like I want you to feel confident. So when I hear that people have got fired, I'm like, mate, what, what's going on? Like, and I'm not, like, obviously this isn't completely my fault, like, they're the ones that did wrong and they're the ones that got fired, however, they were people that watched my channel before they went on board, so I do kind of feel somewhat responsible, whether that's right or wrong, because I'm like, well, maybe if I'd have, like, prepared them better, then this wouldn't have happened, however, there's definitely one person where I'm like, nah, you, that's all you, girl. Anyway, after speaking to these people that got fired, they are under the impression that it was unfair dismissal, um, they should not have been fired for the things that they did, because they believe that it wasn't a good enough reason to fire them. However, their feelings about the rules that they broke, actually, it doesn't matter. Like, if you broke a rule, <laughs> then what do you expect to happen? So I feel like this video is gonna be a little bit rambly. I'm gonna make it as concise as I can. There are a few things that people really struggle with when they first get on board a cruise ship. One of them's homesickness. Maybe some people have seasickness. Very few people though, uh, the long hours. But something that most people really have to get used to is the rules and the fact that you are under a microscope. If you have a job on land, you may be under a microscope and following rules when you are in the office, but as soon as you leave that office at 5 p.m. or whenever, you can do your own thing. No one cares what you do, no one's watching you. You can do anything. On a cruise ship, it's very different. Whether you are at work or whether you're on your off time, if you are on that cruise ship, you will be on a camera somewhere. And I'm not saying, there aren't people sat in an office watching you walk from place to place on cameras, but the point is, you can't break a rule without being caught, if that makes sense. And also, even if you are on the biggest cruise ship in the world, it's still a confined area full of people that know you. If you're doing something you shouldn't be, there's always gonna be someone that sees that. If you're, it's like living in a small town. I live in a small town. If I go out in my town and, what am I gonna do? Do something reckless if I, jump in the river, not that I would, but if I jump in the river, someone I know is gonna see that and people are gonna talk and everyone in my town is gonna know that I jumped in the river. Awful example, but you get the point. It's the same on a cruise ship. If I am somewhere that I shouldn't be, it only takes one person to see me. And as I've said, 
things spread like wildfire. People know you have done something before you have done it. And it's true, unfortunately, it is just one of those things. So if you are someone who struggles to follow rules, you know, you're a little bit of a rebel, then cruise ships just isn't for you. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but choose another career path because whatever cruise line you go on, whether that is Cunard, that are known for being strict, or whether it is Virgin, who are known for being relaxed, there are rules that you need to follow. And if you do not follow them, there will be consequences. And these rules are in place for a good reason. And it doesn't matter what rule it is. So for example, there is the 0 0.05 drinking limit, which depending on your height and weight, basically means when you're not at work, you can have up to one beer worth of alcohol in your, in your system. If you are ever over that, you can be fired. Now, the reason that this rule is in place is because an emergency on a cruise ship can happen at any time. Now, if there was no drinking limit and the ship went into an emergency and half of the crew members were paralytically drunk, we gone die. Like, we're gonna be screwed because the people that know what's going on and know what to do in an emergency, are gonna be out of action. Now, as I've said before, people do get drunk on cruise ships, they do. But because of this drinking limit, and because there is such a harsh punishment if you are found to be over the drinking limit, it really does make people think twice. And most people, yes, they may go over that one beer, but they will always, most of the time, be able to snap back into action. Like, very few people on a cruise ship get so drunk that like they wouldn't be able to sober themselves up if something happened. Maybe 10 people, maybe five to 10 people on any night get really, really drunk. That's, and that's quite a lot. But let's say the ship went into a state of emergency. If 10 crew members are out of action because they're shit faced, we're gonna be fine. Like the cruise ship can still function. We can still get everyone in the lifeboats if need be with 10 crew members that are useless. So that is why the drinking limit is in place. It's for safety reasons. Another rule is, depending on what department you are in, some crew members are not allowed in some of the passenger areas or areas on the cruise ship. Now, a lot of crew members who don't understand this are like, oh, it's so unfair that, for example, the entertainment staff are allowed to eat in the passenger restaurants, but the housekeeping staff aren't allowed to eat in the passenger restaurants. And you know what? I was one of these people when I was on Royal Caribbean and P&O moaning about the fact that entertainment staff, marine staff could go to all the fancy places on the ship and us housekeeping and shop staff had to stay in certain areas of the ship until I joined Virgin Voyages in 2020 and their whole philosophy was everyone's equal, everyone like every crew member is allowed in every area of the ship. Doesn't matter if you're in housekeeping or entertainment, you're allowed to eat in any of the passenger restaurants you want. You can drink in any of the bars. And let me tell you, it was a shit show. It was an absolute shambles. And I was like, oh, right, so that is why that's in place. Because although they say, you know, take a sailor first approach, People are people at the end of the day. Some are great and some follow the rules, but a lot of people are entitled and they don't. And what was happening is you'd have passengers and crew members in a restaurant waiting for their food. And passengers were waiting like half an hour longer because there were so many crew members in front of them. So Virgin were forced to basically be like, okay, that does not work. We are gonna have to do what other cruise lines do in some aspects and you know, some people are allowed and some people aren't. And I have heard everything over the years, you know, they say, oh, well, you know, the reason that like housekeeping and the bar staff aren't allowed in passenger areas and the entertainment staff are, is because the entertainment staff are mainly made up of people who come from America or the UK and then housekeeping staff are mainly made up of people who come from the Philippines and India and all of that. And I was like, that is the biggest load of crap I have ever heard. The reason is, there is a lot less, and we're just using entertainment staff as an example, there is a lot less entertainment staff than there are housekeeping staff. Like, housekeeping staff, there must, there's at least 200 housekeeping staff, at least. 
entertainment staff maybe there's 30 to 40 I'm just thinking of virgin and there is no way of saying to housekeeping oh only half of you are allowed in sailor areas today and okay theoretically you could say that but who's going to monitor it no one's got time to be monitoring it so it's a lot easier to just be like this department can be in sailor areas and this department can't be in sailor areas. And it doesn't matter what you think of that rule. It's a rule and you have to follow it. So basically one of these people uh, who I'm referring to who got fired was basically fired because she was drinking in sailor bars um, and doing other stuff that she shouldn't be. And when questioned about it, she was like, well, that's ridiculous. I should be allowed to go in the manor. I should be allowed to eat here. I should be allowed to drink it on the rocks. Why? If I can't, why can you? If, if no one else on the team can, why should you? The thing is, it happened multiple times. And this is the thing on cruise ships, and for many jobs nowadays, you have to do something quite a few times for it to be a real problem. You do it once, don't do it again. You do it twice, I've told you not to do it. You do it three times, well now you're just taking the piss. And if you continue to do it, your manager's only gonna have so much patience before they're like, you know what, there's a thousand people who want your job. So off you go, pack your bags. So basically, what I am getting at is ship life is amazing. You are going to visit places that you would probably not be able to go to on your own. You are going to meet people, the best people you'll ever meet. I would say 90% of my best friends are from ships. You're going to be able to save money. You are Like, there are so... There are so many incredible things that come with working on a cruise ship, but it is a job and there are rules to follow. Like, and again, on land, if you're late for work, you'll be like, oh my God, I was stuck in traffic or you can call up, I'm ill. One of these people that got fired, she would go out to crew bar, get absolutely annihilated and then call in sick the next day for work. Well, Everyone knows that you're not sick because everyone was with you at the bar last night, but everyone is at work with their hangover nevertheless. And the problem is, it's one thing when your managers are like, mm, but when your teammates are like, mm, that's when you know you have a problem. The only reason that you wouldn't be in work on a cruise ship is if you are genuinely sick. Anything else, you, you're you there on time. You don't have traffic as an excuse. Like, that, there is no excuse for being late to work unless it's your first week on board and you're like, I'm sorry, I got lost. Okay, fine, everyone gets lost. But other than that, you are at work on time every day for that contract. Now, I need to stop veering off. It is the best job you can ever have. I truly, truly believe that. But it is a job. And if you wanna go on a cruise, and be able to go everywhere on the ship and do everything, then you need to pay for a cruise. It really annoys me and it's just disappointing when I hear that people get fired a few weeks into their contract. Definitely for these three people and for a lot of the other people that I know, that I know have got fired soon into their contract. The issue is that they're going on board these cruise ships for a good time, but that's it. Like, they're like, I'm not here to work, like I am just gonna do the absolute bare minimum when I am at work, but I'm gonna live it up when I'm off. <sighs> You're not gonna last very long. It, it is a work hard, play hard situation. And if you only play hard, well, you'll either be fired or you just won't be asked to go back for another contract. You'll finish your contract and you'll just never hear from the company again. And I know people are sat at home being like, oh my God, why have they keep saying this? Why haven't they given me a contract? Well, Cause you're crap because all you did was get drunk and have an attitude when you were at work. Why would they want you back? So basically, if you are wanting to go on a cruise ship, fantastic, you'll have a great time, but you need to be aware that it's a job. And I know it sounds stupid and I know it sounds simple, and I know that most of you know that and you do go on board to work and you're amazing, but there are just a few who are like, oh, this is a big holiday. It's not. And if you treat it like it is, you're just not gonna get the best out of it.
because your teammates are going to start to resent you, which means it's going to be hard to make friendships. If you're thinking of going on a cruise ship and you're thinking it's going to be a big holiday, then maybe just go on a holiday and get another job because cruise ships is definitely not that. But anyway, um, that was basically a bit of a rant. I just wanted to, I did, I just wanted to get that off my chest, but I also just wanted to really try and hone in that it's a job, it's not, it's not a big holiday. I know that maybe looking at my Instagram and a few of my videos, you're like, oh my God, it is a holiday. Um, but there's also a lot of videos that shows the work, the long hours. So maybe have another look at them because, you know, you're gonna be doing both. But anyway, please let me know in the comments if you think I'm being too harsh, if you have any questions, and if you have been on board, was it harder than you were expecting? Was it easier than you were expecting? But yeah, let's just get into a discussion in the comments. But anyway, I love you so much. I really appreciate you watching this video. Um, and I would really appreciate if you'd give it a little like for me because it helps me out with the algorithm. Um, but yeah, I am gonna go. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. But have a great day.